option that you can use. This is a Head Start story um, that they use called Dragon Brain. This is what we use in our classroom. Um, mostly because I think for the younger kids, I find it a little more relatable to that like explosion of like a a big emotion coming over you and kind of taking over your brain and not being able to rationalize. So it's a little simpler, a little shorter. Um, they don't have the story on there, but it does have the address where you can um, download it. You can download um, a story about a boy or a girl. It's the same one. So if you have, if you wanted to send them home and you have four boys and three girls or whatever, you can print off the right number. But the story says, some situation makes the boy angry, the boy gets angry, and the boy gets dragon brain. The boy remembers flower and candle reading, so he smells the flower, blows out the candle, and now the dragon calms down, and the boy is calm and ready to play. So it's just the same concept of taking those deep breaths, calming down. Um, this one's a little less about recognizing your anger in as much as just knowing that you have a dragon brain and you need to do something. I remember Vanessa's boys, they really got into the dragon brain and when they saw someone starting to get angry, they were like, you're about to get dragon brain, like, you know, stop, do something. Um, but you can get dragon puppets, you can play with it. Um, in our circle time, we've passed out um, at little, you know, uh, fake flowers that you could get a little bunch at Michael's or, and give them a flower to hold and a little birthday candle and they can practice smelling the flower and blowing out their candle. Um, I think it's a nice concrete visual for teaching two-year-olds how to blow and take a deep breath is the smell the flower and they all relate to blowing out the birthday candles. Um, and the other thing is it gives them that, that concept of getting their body back into that calm state. It doesn't quite get in, that story doesn't get into thinking of solutions. Which I think if you have an old enough crowd and they're ready to take that problem solving step, the Tucker Turtle's more appropriate for them. The reason I use it for the two year olds is we rarely get into the, I was mad and I need to think of a solution, we're just trying to calm our bodies back down. Um, but it's a great solution um, story too. So here, that's another thing that you can download if you'd like. Um, and then there's another one. This problem solving steps. If you have kids that can really master Tucker Turtle and they're ready to go to the next step, we call them solution kids. And it's getting into more specific problem solving techniques that are really concrete enough for kids to implement themselves. So we want to empower them to start solving these problems without needing an adult to mediate the situation. So we're going to teach them the problem solving steps. We're going to let them think of alternative solutions. Um, we're going to let them learn that solutions have consequences. Um, some things might happen when you try this one and some things might happen when you try this other one. We'll just have to see what happens. And getting into that whole, this is that executive functioning piece of learning to reason out, is this a good solution? Is it safe? <coughs> is it fair? You know? The solution you suggested might be really great for you, but is Vanessa going to want to do it? I don't think it's fair. Um, are we going to have good feelings when we think of this solution? You know? If we're supposed to share something, is Annie going to be happy with this solution too? It's just a way to take those, those executive function reasoning steps to the next level. And then what do they do when a solution doesn't work? And we do practice this with the toddlers all the time. What happens when you tried trading and they said no? What are you going to do now? We have to have multiple solutions when we try, but the point is they have this toolkit of solutions that they can have at their disposal to keep trying until they're successful. Um, so this is just a visual. This is also something you can download. It says, what is my problem? Think, think, think of some solutions. And then this is that kind of evaluation piece. What would happen? Would it be safe? Would it be fair? How would everyone feel? And then the last step is, let's give it a try. And it's kind of that spirit, like, let's give it a try. It's, a, it's an idea, let's try it. And there's, 
it's an encouragement piece that we're giving them, and we want them to continue with that spirit. So Everett was in Miss D's class, and when they would kind of come get the teacher, you know, tattletale or just kind of reach out for help, she actually sent this home, and she made it an expectation for us at home as parents too. But I thought it was so interesting to watch his little brain. So you would ask him each question when he had a problem. So when he thought of the solution, you would ask him these three things. And it was amazing when he would get to the last one, how would everyone feel and he'd go through it? And he'd be like, no, that's not gonna work. And then you'd think of another one. So it's really amazing when you just give them some like concrete guidelines of thinking, how it, they almost are like, oh, that won't work. <laughs> Before they even have to go try it. It's, it was really powerful, it was pretty neat. I like to give it a try because, like you said, if it doesn't work, go and try a different solution. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no, sh I mean, we don't want kids to feel any shame in trying something. Because yeah. that's what we're encouraging them to do. We want to celebrate the fact that they tried something. Even if they tried a trade and it didn't work, high five, dude, you tried it. Let's try another one. You know, we're on a roll. Let's go. Um, but here's what the solution kit is. And who won the trade question? Penny did. Penny did. Ooh, Penny. Penny gets laminated solutions. So these are available online too. Um, you. you can get this big size. You can also get little cards. Uh, I think there's actually some right here. Um, uh, there's some little ones that are about this big two by two, you can put them on, laminate them, put them on a little keychain or a little um, ring. Take them with you. If you're out at the playground and everyone's coming in having a problem, you don't need to go inside to get your reminders, your visual cues. You just got them in your pocket or on your belt loop or something. You can take them on a field trip and something happens. Can you link us that also? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I said this in like a little table, like so I had the, the, the problem solving process like that you just had on the mm -hmm. same with the questions uh -huh. and then I would have the kit on the table like with the solutions and so when kids would have problems they would go over to the table they'd yeah. look at the problem they go down the problem they get out some of their solutions and then they would kind of figure out what they were going to try mm -hmm. and it's a really neat way. we're going to watch a really cool video but I mean she actually puts them in a little kit and she puts them in a little suitcase for them you can put them in it so kids can they have a problem they go over they get it they open it up we used to have a little suitcase with ours. We only give them three solutions in the two-year-old class because that's about as much as we can manage developmentally. What are your three? Uh, ours are get a timer, trade, or get another toy. And the beauty of that is they can always be successful with one of those three. Get a timer is always successful 100% of the time. Getting another toy successful 100% of the time. Timer is the only one that you might get rejected, trading, but it's trading. I mean, yeah, trading. But it's intentionally in there for them to Perfect. feel that opportunity mm -hmm. of getting rejected and it didn't work and Not needing to try else. another solution. So that we know if Not they always. if they tried trading first and they got rejected, they will be successful the next time. So we've limited it to only needing to try two times. <laughs> That's the most you'll ever have to try in our class. And we know you'll be successful, so we're setting them up to be successful. Right. But we're intentionally embedding ones that may like or may not. Um, but yeah, so there's different. I think there's three different sizes of these actually. So you could pick what you like. You could laminate and do whatever you want. Um, the first one is get a teacher. This should be the first one that you teach, though, because you always want the kids to have something that they can fall back on when they're unsuccessful with some of the other ones. So you want to teach them this one first, get a teacher, which... Because then when they're learning, you can, the teacher can then help them figure out other options. Right. And if something fails, then the they have something to ready. fall back on that's going to be successful. This is your fail-safe for the older kids. They can get a teacher. Um, but there's Ask Nicely, there's Ignore. We're going to watch an awesome video about teaching kids to ignore. It's my, sec my second video. Actually, it might be my first. Those two are tied. Um, play together is a solution. Say, please stop is a solution. Saying please. Sharing. Trading. And waiting and taking turns. So, a real, I mean, and the other thing is you don't have to 
you don't have to have all these out all the time. You can pick and choose the ones that work for your kids. You can pick and choose the ones that you've taught. I don't, I don't put a solution out in my classroom until I explicitly taught the kids what it is and how to use it. So you may put, get a teacher, but if you're teaching Ask Nicely, you're going to have to, what does that mean? We've got to explain this. Ignoring, this needs training. Kids don't just know how to ignore. We, we, it's a, actually a complex kind of technique. Um, playing together, what does that mean? What do those scenarios look like? How would we practice it? So there, it's a nice way to, for kids to keep building on and getting more and more tools, but I would make sure that they know how to, um, how to use it before we implement it. Some of the other ones um, in Head Start, they go, they go on with even more solutions. I mean, if you've got a rock star group of kids and they're ready to do some more things, they do any meeny miny mo or flipping coins or rock, paper, scissors. I mean, you can get creative. You could have a lot of solutions that work in your, in your program that help kids. But we just want to give them those life skills so that they can have something to fall back on when they do go play at the park or go to the church babysitting and they need to figure out something and they're not in your little bubble. We want them to have those life skills to still be successful in any scenario. Be careful of any mini money mo because yeah. uh, Everett they taught us Everett but it's so cute. It's like all right, you can use one more thing at the park before we leave. It's like now he has um any mini money mo dinosaurs lived such a long time ago. He has this whole thing it's like but it fire. takes forever. <laughs> well I'm like you can tell I don't know if you heard yesterday outside, but one of the little kids we were playing outside and she wanted this toy back. And she was starting, she's a, a really strong grabber. She has a real tremendous in, impulse control challenge. And so I knew that she was going to grab that stuff, but I just let her, I just waited to see what she was going to do. And she did, she tried to grab it. So I stopped her and gave it back to the little girl. And I said, we use waving hands. If you want to ask for a turn, you can ask. And so she tapped her on the shoulder. She asked for the toy and the friend told her it was busy. And I said, now what do you want to do? Because she said it was busy. <laughs> and so our three solutions are those ones we've been practicing. And she said, well, you, you do it like this, Miss Brooke. One, two, three, now give it to me. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if her mom does that. Yeah, yeah, she I does. said, that might be a solution with mom. But at school, <laughs> our solutions <laughs> are training, <laughs> getting a timer, right. or doing this. Which mom would you like to do? Three. And she grabbed our timer and she brought it out and she turned it over and they took a lot of turns with the timer. But it's funny because if you don't give kids solutions that are they'll appropriate, they, they 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 and, and maybe they'll end up teaching parents at home. But so this is a one video. This is the person I was telling you about. Uh, let me see where it is. Gail Joseph is her name. Just in case you want. But she's one of the authors of the Cephal module too. Um, she's a really great teacher. It seems like. Um, but this is a solution, I mean a situation where a little girl was playing in this area right here and she um, got into a little scuffle with someone else. So she's come over to work through this problem with her. That's right, you tried to take it. What are you doing about our solution? You won't give me the car? Yes, sir. You won't give me the car? You won't let me have a car? What solutions did you try? Well, it looks like you tried to take it from him. Was that a good solution? That's right. You tried to take it and he didn't give it to you. It looks like you maybe got hurt a little bit. So was that a very good solution? Yeah. So what do you, what do you think you should try next? Okay, try that one. Oh man, that's such a good solution, and he still said no. He's making it tough on you, Marisha. What else can you do? Okay, try that one. Wait for me just a minute. What did he say? You tried two really good solutions, and he still said no. You are such a good problem solver. What else could you try? Where can we find more solutions at? What is that thing that Maggie had? Do you remember? What did Maggie have? She had that big suitcase. What 
What was that? Maybe. Maggie had that. What did she have? The solution kit. Should we get the solution kit? Do you know what the solution kit is? Jordan? Anthony, do you know what the solution kit is? Can you go grab it for us? We've got a case for the solution kit. Thanks, buddy. That was very helpful. All right, Larisha. Open it up. she thought of on her own that she remembered before she needed and she really celebrated her fact of trying she was praising counting she was telling her she was strong and she was a good problem solver she didn't dictate what was good, supposed to happen with the kids like, yeah. like and she didn't remove the girl from that area did she mm -hmm. she sat right next to that little boy who wasn't sharing the toy but she didn't have to go somewhere else to solve that problem I find that that's one thing that's really valuable in teaching kids is they like to try to run away so that they don't have to solve the problem or deal with the situation. But clearly this class has practiced it enough that he felt comfortable continuing to sit there and race the car right next to them because he didn't feel threatened that she was going to take his turn away from him. So, yeah. What else did you notice? I like that the teacher stayed with her mm -hmm. throughout and then asked another child to get the solution. Mm -hmm. So they she used a lot still, of friendship so she skills. Was still, yeah. mm -hmm. She was still supporting her. Well, she wasn't prompting the boy like, well, could you share? What do you think? Right. Mm -hmm. right. It was It was on her to solve the problem. Ask him. Mm -hmm. And everything that she said was just prompting the little girl. Like you said, mm -hmm. she was the one who got to have the voice to solve the problem. The other thing was um, those visual cues. So when she couldn't think of any more, she didn't necessarily have to tell her. They had that solution kit with her to be able mm -hmm. to look at these pictures and get some ideas. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it was it's a fun book. So we want to give kids a lot of time, just like everything else we've been talking about. I mean, it seems like we have a lot of things we need to do all day long, but we can really embed them in there. But we need to prioritize all the time through the day. And you can set that up by talking about things ahead of time. Oh man, we have six kids at the snack table and we only have one apple. What are we going to do? And letting them know that they're problem solving. One of the things from that video, did you notice she used the word solutions? Mm -hmm. Like teaching kids those mm -hmm. words. Yeah. Solutions, problems, problem solving. Um, prompting the question, well, what would we do if that happened? Even though the scenario hasn't come up yet, we're 
planning, planting that seed in their head of an appropriate way to solve the problem should that event occur. Um, making those little personalized solution kits. Maybe there's some kids in your program that really need their own. Um, maybe you need to come up with a solution that really hones in on something that one of the kiddos in your classroom really needs. There might be something special. Um, and the kids offering solutions when you guys are reading books. Talk about the problems of those main characters. Books are great ways for kids to solve those complex problems in a non-threatening way because it's not elevating them. They're already calm, they're engaged in the story, they can come up with solutions to the problem. Oh no, he's riding his bike without his helmet, what should he do? You know, what, what kinds of things should happen? So. These are just some other visual examples. I know they're a little hard to see, but um, this is just some laminated visuals that are hanging on necklaces. This is actually some adult um, problem solving kits, solution kits that are hanging in a restroom. This is a little girl, she has the blank thermometer and she's coloring her thermometer in. Um, this is an individualized solution. Maybe you have some certain situations and you need to take pictures or create a little story for a particular kid. Can be on a particular topic or just throughout the day, something that you might need to reference back to um, and use their own pictures to make it more powerful. So this is that same teacher again, and she's teaching this skill. It's on these two videos you get today. It's that ant one and this these are my two favorites. Um, but she's teaching the solution of ignore. But before they're going to use it in class, she's going to teach them what it is and how to use it. Maddie, what did you bring with you today? Oh, well, this is kind of my special, special shield. Do you see it? Watch. <laughs>
just teaching in a group circle. Practicing. For sure, practicing. She gave a lot of reinforcement. Every kid got a chance to look like to come up one at a time and practice their shields. She reinforced it just in a natural occurrence, right? It just happened at snack table, so she used it. And she was able to support. I just think that, lang that empowering language, that positive language she used, made the difference between that being just an average, explanation or demonstration of that tool to being something so engaging and proactive that kids want to use it by saying you're so strong you're being so strong oh my goodness you don't even need the shield and you're so strong and she just kept praising their ideas and that strength I think was the real positive t tune that they could pick up on and keep using to keep something that could turn really negative. I mean, introducing the concept of teasing to little kids is a real fine line to, to introduce because once you open that gate, it's like Pandora's box. I mean, they think it's a great idea, and I suspect that that kid started teasing at, or may have started teasing at snack time just because, hey, we just got the idea. We just, I mean, Nanner nanner sounds kind of fun to keep saying to people. So um. yeah, and she even gave the the kids that were going to be teasing some verbiage to say, "Well, I really just want your attention, so I'm going to use nice words and ask you to play with me." Yeah. So not only did she help that, she helped both kids out. So right. kind of yeah. good. And she used a puppet, which I'm sure was. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody. The room was really quiet, and it seemed like there were a lot of kids in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so this is one more that we're going to do. Um, this is a video that you're going to watch, and then we're going to do an activity with it after. So we're going to watch. There's a little boy in, in the dramatic play area. They're all kind of wearing yellow shirts, but he's holding the phone. Um, and what you want to watch for is what social emotional skill does he need to learn. So that's going to be your task watching the video. And then when we finish the video, we're going to do an activity with it afterwards. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is really good. Why is that? Do you want to taste it? Oh! 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 Oh!
on it as a group. You could talk about how you're going to let Xavier and the class as a whole, how can we practice that skill at each of those intervals. And I'll challenge you this time on your learning opportunity to get really specific. Like think of an actual activity. I mean, just make something up. But instead of keeping it in the generic, keep it really specific on what you're going to do to practice that skill. So. I don't want to give you too many ideas, but you know, obviously it was around sharing and taking turns. Um, what activity you want, to, what social skill you want to pick. It could be using your words. I mean, she gave him a lot of things, keeping his body calm. There were a lot of skills that he could benefit from learning just to help in that one play scenario. So you can pick one of them and mark it on your paper, and then you and your partner could, or you could do it individually if you'd rather. But. We're on the home stretch, ladies. Does anyone have any questions? All right. Challenge accepted, you said. <laughs>